Okay. So, a little update here on our um, homemade governor springs. Uh, they work quite well. Um, they're still not as uh, free moving. And, um, and since the last video, I went ahead also and took the um, governor out of the uh, banner Model B sitting up on the shelf there. It's got a broken... broken spring as you can see so the weights are riveted on I'll have to drill that out and put new spring on I'll probably just order a, um, a new spring from Ron Sitko with a weight on it so there'll still be a match set and I'll probably end up doing the same thing on this on this Victor here it, it the speed regulation is heads over tails much better than it was um, before. I know in the first video of this machine where I introduced it to the collection, I'd mentioned that I had went through the motor and I had, uh, but I noticed a lot of problems with the speed. It wanted to warble quite badly. And so you'd end up with a vibrato effect on sustained notes. And uh, pulled the governor back apart, and um, so I noticed that pretty much um, all but one of the springs were good. I mean, when I had taken the motor apart, I took the governor off of the governor arbor to clean, but I never really fiddled with it a whole lot. And then when I put it back together, I uh, messed with it a little bit to, to get the speed adjustment. But then I noticed that when playing records, it wasn't stable. And so I took the governor back off, took it apart, and so I found that two of the three springs were basically junk. And as you can see, they broke pretty easily. And this, this third spring here, this blue one, is the one that was intact. And it was the one I used as a template for making these other springs that you see here but I've been looking through my uh, collection of uh, mainspring bits and pieces and haven't really been able to find any um, any mainsprings that are uh, suitable size I did find a um, some smaller mainsprings that are just a tiny tad narrower than these um, these broken springs were but they were much too brittle to punch. Um, I don't know if this is one of the pieces or not. Oh no, this is a piece of that that I cut the first set with. This is a piece that I cut the second set with that's in there now. But I can show you um, what the springs being too strong does to the regulation. Here's the strobe disc you've seen in the other video. As you can see, it's pretty good. But this speed regulator dial is marked... Um, you can see 76, 80, 70 RPM. If I turn it up to 80 RPM, the, the speed doesn't quite increase linearly with the dial. And you can see it's really rocking right there. And then if I turn it down, because the pads are so close uh, to get it to regulate correctly, because of the stiff springs, it really doesn't regulate like it's supposed to. That's uh, that is definitely not 76 RPM. That's much slower. And if I turn it down to uh, to there, I see I can't even get to 70 RPM before it's stopped. So. And what? There we go. But the regulation is really very good. And, um, there's no more warble anymore. If I play, uh, bit of this record here.
you can see, it sounds really pretty good. Uh, I wish I'd done a video uh, before doing any work on the governor at all, so you could hear the um, the warble in it. It was really extremely annoying. It was um, unpleasant to listen to anything with a piano or a bell in it or sustained notes. Here's the record. So, um, uh, great improvement. Continue to make some improvements on it. I'll get the, um, probably go ahead and just order the correct springs since, um, uh, I don't have any stock that's the right, uh, size. And I'd like this to be able to work correctly with that regulator there on that dial. So, like I said, I've been, a uh, measuring these with the with the dial calipers here checking the sizes of the of the springs and um, yeah, I really don't have anything that's that's close enough and the, the thickness of them springs is going to be very important for how um, heavy they are how much how much influences the action of the governor of the um, uh, the heavier the spring, the less influence the weight has on the um, on the speed. And as a consequence, for a given speed, the disc doesn't move up as much. Uh, for a lighter spring and a heavier weight, uh, for that same speed, the, the disc will move up much higher. So that's kind of how the relationship is. You can... Um, you can speed up a slow machine with stiffer springs, or you can slow down a fast machine with um, with lighter springs or heavier weights. Kind of like a Columbia Q. It's sometimes hard to get a Columbia Q to uh, run at 160 RPM to play um, the later records, because it was made for the older records. So if you rebuild it with slightly heavier springs you can regulate the motor to run at 160 RPM without the governor weights flying out so far. So that is something to keep in mind. Anyway, I was able to get this to operate at the correct speed to play a record, so that's all that's important. And the motor is not perfectly silent, but it's a lot quieter than it was when I started out, so... Play us off, Guy Lombardo.